Hello students and uh, here uh, we are again back with the yet another session of the Ophthal Rewind. Today I have brought something very interesting for you people and that is actually the OCT, a very upcoming investigation which we are doing nowadays for the posterior segment diseases. Like we have the ultrasound that was uh, mainly used before but now we are using more of this optical coherence tomography that is your OCT. Now, not only we will discuss the basic aspects of OCT today, I will also help you in comparing two very important disease on OCT that is your CSR and the CME, very two important diseases uh, that are actually diagnosed on the OCT. One is the central serous retinopathy and another is your cystoid macular edema. Okay, all right. Now, without wasting much of the time, let's come on the OCT. Can you see here, I have taken a very basic picture of OCT, Optical Coherence Tomography. Now, what it is using actually, it is using the radiations which are coercing and then it is coming up with the contours of the retina, tomography. Tomography means the contours of the retina. Now, how many layers in retina? You all know that we have 10 layers in the retina and these 10 layers can actually be delineated on this OCT that is optical coherence tomography. Now, can you see here? See this red one. The red layer that you can see here, this is the outermost layer that is the retinal pigment epithelium. Now, as I say that this is actually pigment epithelium Therefore, it is reddish in color. It, you will see a red bright layer that is the pigment epithelium. Okay. Then you can see this green area. So, this green area is actually what you call as the neurosensory retina. This is called as neurosensory retina. Now, let me remind you what was the neurosensory retina. The nine layers apart from the retinal pigment epithelium, the nine layers apart from retinal pigment epithelium are actually consisting of the neurosensory retina and we have a space. We have got a space in between the two. This space is called as the subretinal space. Reminds you of the subretinal space. Now, as I always say that the subretinal space is actually lying within the layers of retina. We have RPE that is the outermost layer and then we have the neurosensory retina that is your nine layers. These are the nine layers and then we have a subretinal space. Can you see this is darker in color. Why this space is darker in color? Because it contains fluid, SRF. What was SRF? The subretinal fluid. So, you can see the basic structure of retina. Again, I am showing you. This red one is the RPE layer. Then this green one. This green one is the neurosensory retina. This one. And this darker one is actually the subretinal space. This darker one is the subretinal space and it contains a fluid called as subretinal fluid. Now, another important thing, RPE layer, this is the outermost layer of the retina. Now, because this is the outermost layer of the retina, can you see it is in contact with the choroid. That is why it is towards the choroid while the innermost layer that is your internal limiting membrane. What was the innermost layer of retina? The internal limiting membrane. So, this is towards the vitreous. So, you can see this also outermost layer towards the choroid, innermost layer towards the vitreous. Okay. Now, another important thing is this, the fovea. Can you see a depression here? Now, why there is a depression here? There is a depression. This is called as the foveal depression. This depression is called as the foveal depression. And why it is called as depression? 
because there are some layers which are absent at fovea layers are absent at fovea so fovea is looking depressed here now wa what layer is particularly absent can you see this ganglionic cell layer ganglionic cell layer this yellowish one it is coming up till here then see from here also it is coming up till here so it is actually this ganglionic cell layer which is absent in the fovea that is why we have foveal depression now it's not for mandatory for you people to recognize all the layers but you can see that we can actually delineate all the layers in the retina on this oct but uh, as far as we are concerned for our entrance examination you should know the outermost layer rp layer it is towards the choroid then second one you should know the internal limiting membrane it is towards the vitreous then you should know the subretinal space between the two you should know the fluid subretinal fluid between the two and then you should know about the foveal depression why because in some areas you will have to make out the macular area when i am talking about the csr i am talking about the macular lesion when i am talking about the cme again i am talking about a macular lesion so i will have to identify the macular area on the oct in order to identify the pathology in the central serous retinopathy and in the cystoid macular edema so when you are able to see this fovea i will come to know that this is actually the macular area that is why it is important to identify the fovea on the oct so you know the principle you know the outermost layer the innermost layer then the subretinal space subretinal fluid and the foveal depression all right now see this one what i was saying this is just the replica of this again can you see the outermost layer is the retinal pigment epithelium this one is the retinal pigment epithelium that is towards the choroid okay then we can see this is the internal limiting membrane it is towards the vitreous this is towards the vitreous now this is the foveal depression here foveal depression due to the absence of ganglionic cell layer right now can you see this black area this is the sub retinal space sub retinal space having the sub retinal fluid so now we know how to read this oct okay now this is just to show you that we can actually delineate all the 10 layers on the oct so on our level when i want to see what is the problem with the nerve fiber layer what is the problem with ganglionic cell layer then inner plexiform inner nuclear outer plexiform outer nuclear and all the layers then you can actually do it on oct this is a beautiful picture of a normal retina showing all the 10 layers on the oc t all right now i'll be talking about first the csr we have csr and then we have cme now first start with the name what is csr the name is central it is central then it is serous central serous retinopathy central serous retinopathy now what is the meaning of central here you should be able to actually come from come from the name of that disease how to actually calculate the disease from its name itself how to interpret the disease from the name itself now the name is central central means the macula so basically it is involving the macula serous serous means fluid so it is also involving the fluid which fluid the subretinal fluid so now i can say that it's a retinopathy which involves a center of the retina which retina the center of the retina and the center of the retina is actually the macula now what actually happens here? there is actually what you called as detachment there is the 
detachment of the neurosensory retina. So, pathology is the detachment of neurosensory retina. This is your neurosensory retina. In which area? The macular area. There is a detachment of neurosensory retina in macular area. Okay. Now, try to see this OCT. Can you see here? This was the neurosensory retina. This is the foveal depression. This is the foveal depression. And then this is your RPE layer. The retinal pigment epithelium. Now, this will be your macular area. When this is the macular area, can you see detachment of the macula in the macular area? Now, because there is detachment of the macula in this area, there is collection of fluid. And this fluid is SRF. What fluid? SRF, that is subretinal fluid. So, I can see detachment of neurosensory retina. I can see collection of the fluid. Therefore, I can say that this is central serous retinopathy. Therefore, I can say that this is central serous retinopathy. So, this is how you will see the OCT picture of the CSR. Now, in whose profile you will suspect? What will be the patient's profile in which we should suspect this CSR? So, always remember a male. It's more common in a male. Then about 50 years of age, a male having 50 years of age, then having the type A personality, having a type A personality, A for anxious personality, A for ambitious personality, those who are always in hurry, doing lot of worry and taking lot of curry, hurry, worry and curry, always remember type A means hurry, worry and curry. So, a male 50 years old, type A personality along with 3S, stress, smoking, along with stress, smoking and the steroids. So, all those people who have got 3S in their life, what 3S? Those who are having lot of stress, lot of smoking, lot of steroids. Now combine these six features, a male 50 years of age, type A personality with stress, smoking and steroids makes a IT business executive, the business tycoons who are working in multinational companies having lot of stress and their uh, profile demands the stress, they are exposed to smoking and steroids. So, all those patients who are having all these factors are those patients who are in which the CSR is very common. So, whenever question says a IT business executive, a business professional, you can think of CSR. A good clinician can think of a particular disease with respect to the patient's profile also. If uh, I say a person coming from rural background, farmer by occupation, you will not think about CSR. Then think of the fungal corneal ulcer. So, you should be able to get the disease from the patient's profile too. All right. Now, see this. Sometimes you can get this OCT also. Now, how it is different from the previous one? How it is different from the previous one? Now, let us try to uh, analyze this OCT. This red one is again the RPE layer, right? This black will be the subretinal space. This is again your subretinal space having the subretinal fluid. Then this is the neurosensory retina. This is the neurosensory retina, right? And this will be the area of fovea. Okay. Now, can you see these cis-like spaces? These cis-like spaces which are present in the macular area. Now, here because you are having cis-like spaces in the macular area, therefore, this is CME. That is cystoid. Therefore, this is cystoid macular edema. Therefore, it is a case of cystoid, cystoid, cyst-like spaces in the macular area due to the collection of fluid. Edema means collection of fluid. Now, which layers, which layers are involved for the collection of fluid? Always remember it is open. As I tell you always this in class also, 
two important layers which opens the gate for the retinal diseases. Two important layers which opens the gate for retinal diseases is the outer plexiform and inner nuclear layer. So you can remember it by open, outer plexiform, inner nuclear layer. Two important layers in which you can get edema, outer plexiform, inner nuclear layer. So a person having this kind of OCT was CSR. While a person having this kind of OCT will be having CME, cystoid macular edema. Now what is the etiology? CSR was a male, he was 50 years of age, he was type A personality, then stress, smoking and steroids. Now what is occurring in CME? Here you have edema, edema is due to the inflammation. So basically it is due to intraocular inflammation. Here you will get intraocular inflammation. Now this intraocular inflammation can be due to the cataract surgery. Any surgery but cataract surgery is most commonly done. So cataract surgery. What is the special name here? That is the Irwin. Irwin gas syndrome. So it can occur due to the cataract surgery. There it is called as the Irwin gas syndrome. Then it can occur due to diabetic retinopathy. Diabetic retinopathy contains maculopathy. Maculopathy is the most common cause of vision loss. So these patients can also develop the macular edema. Then we can have uveitis, especially the posterior uveitis. If you have posterior inflammation of the uveal tract, we can have cystoid macular edema. Then certain drugs, it can be prostaglandin analogs. Prostaglandin analogs are very notorious for causing cystoid macular edema. Then we can have epinephrine. Again, epinephrine can also cause cystoid macular edema. So can you see the etiology is entirely different in CSR and in CME. All right, now move ahead. What you will get in funders, if I do ophthalmoscopy in cases of CSR and if I do ophthalmoscopy in CME, what is the difference that I am going to get? So first let us see what you will get in the CSR. What you will get in CSR. Now as you can see here I am having the CSR in the OCT. So this funders is having the CSR. Now can you see the elevated macula here? Because of the detachment, <laughs> listen again, because of the detachment, macula is elevated. Now what is the shape of macula? Circular. That is why this is called as circular, it is called as circular ring reflex. That is why this is called as circular ring reflex. So when you see the funders of a CSR patient, we will get circular ring reflex. Okay, but if you see the fundus of a patient who is actually having fundus of a patient who is having CME. Now see here, this is again a elevated macula. So this is again a circular ring sign. So again I will say that this is circular ring sign. Therefore it is a case of CSR. But I want to see the CME. Now see here. When you are able to see the honeycomb spaces, honeycomb appearance in the fundus, that means it is called as CME. Now why we have honeycomb appearance? Because we have cyst-like spaces. Because cyst-like spaces are present in the fundus here, therefore this appearance is called as honeycomb appearance. Honeycomb appearance is found in the patients of the CME. So you have seen the difference in OCT, then we have seen the difference in the etiology, we have seen the difference clinically and now you are seeing the difference in the fundus. One is a circular ring sign and another is honeycomb appearance. Alright, now look this, how to confirm this. In order to confirm this, you have to do the fluorescein angiography. Now another important question, how to confirm these two diseases? Confirmation is done by the 
fluorocene angiography whether you have to confirm the csr or you have to confirm the cme we will do the fluorocene angiography now a very important question which vein which vein we will use to inject the dye the vein that is used is the anticubital vein the vein that is used is the anticubital vein all right now what is this i know your concentration is on this figure can you see a beautiful mushroom here yeah so this angiography which is showing you mushroom this is actually the mushroom pattern mushroom pattern that you are getting in ffa also called as the umbrella pattern mushroom pattern or the umbrella pattern or it is also called as smoke stack appearance smoke stack appearance mushroom appearance umbrella appearance or the smoke stack appearance one of the very important appearances that you get in csr central serous retinopathy so if any patient comes with the angiography having the csr will show you mushroom pattern also called as umbrella pattern or the smoke stack appearance all right now try to concentrate on this one this is another angiographic finding now this ffa is showing a petaloid pattern there are so many petals here this is called as flower petal appearance this is called as flower petal appearance now flower petal appearance so many petals from where they are coming from so many cyst like spaces and cyst like spaces were present in cme therefore this fa finding is of cme while you get the mushroom pattern in csr we get the flower petal appearance in cme that is cystoid macular edema so yet another investigation by which we can confirm whether it is csr or whether it is cme now see this one this is another fa now this is showing a large blot this is called as ink blot pattern this is called as ink blot pattern now when you are getting this ink blot pattern this is again found in csr it can be a mushroom pattern or it can be a ink blot pattern you are getting a large blot due to the detachment of the neurosensory retina more amount of fluid more amount of fluid means more amount of dye and more amount of dye means larger blot so we are getting a ink blot pattern this is also called as enlarging it is also called as enlarging dot sign this is also called as enlarging dot sign so ink blot pattern or the enlarging dot sign is again a feature of csr so now we have come up to the testing and confirmation of csr and cme now quickly let us see the treatment of csr and the cme what is the treatment of csr and what is the treatment of cme now csr is a self limiting condition it is a self limiting condition resolution occurs in about 4 to 12 weeks spontaneous resolution is occurring in about 4 to 12 weeks therefore wait and watch so wait and watch is a most important thing that we are doing in these patients i'm not saying never give them treatment because it's also a recurrent disease so if it's not resolving or it's bilateral or it's recurrent in those cases we can do photocoagulation but otherwise in maximum cases we are doing just wait and watch but what about the cme this was actually edema because this is edema there was inflammation so you have to treat it it will not resolve on its own so what you will give here we will give the topical anti inflammatory drugs try the anesthetics if anesthetics not work then give the 
steroids, especially in the cataract surgery, the Irwin gas syndrome, all these cases you have to give topical NSAIDs or the topical steroids. So now let's see what is the takeaway message for your home. We have two important diseases of the macula. One is the CSR, one is the CME. Both are presenting at the macula. One is the detachment, another is the edema. The CSR is a male, 50 years. He is having type A personality along with stress, smoking and the steroids. Well, if, while if you see the CME, the CME edema can occur after the cataract surgery, it can occur after the anti-glaucoma drugs, it can occur after the diabetic retinopathy, after the posterior uveitis and some of the cases of retinitis pigmentosa also. Now what is the differentiation on testing? On one CSR you will get the circular ring sign while on CME. On CME, we will get the honeycomb appearance. In CSR, different OCT. In CME, you get the cyst-like spaces, confirmation by the FA. Here, you are getting mushroom pattern or the enlarging dot sign. While in CME, we get the flower petal appearance and ultimately the treatment. While most of the cases, CSR is a self-limiting condition. CME, we have to treat it by the topical anti-inflammatory drugs. So I hope you enjoyed this video you learned something about the OCT, you will be able to identify the OCT of CSR, CME, the fundus finding along with the FFA findings and also the treatment aspect. Uh, tell me uh, if you like the video and uh, also suggest me what are the next topics I should make video on so that you can um, help, you, I can help you in making the topics more simple. Thank you and bye-bye. Happy ophthalmology till then.